In F3 phase alternating current system, the relationship between line to line voltage and line to neutral voltage is determined by the system's configuration and the phase difference between the phases. A common configuration in North America is the 277-480 volt system, which uses a Y-connected secondary on the transformer. To understand why the voltage readings are what they are, it's crucial to grasp the concept of vector addition. In a three-phase system, there are three phases, each carrying an alternating current that is phase shifted by 120 degrees from the others. This phase difference is key to understanding the voltage relationships. Imagine each phase as a vector, with its length representing the voltage and its direction representing its phase angle. In a balanced three-phase system, these vectors are equal in magnitude but separated by 120 degrees. The line-to-line -line voltage is the voltage measured between any two of the three phases. It is not simply the arithmetic sum of the phase to neutral voltages. Instead, it's the vector sum of the voltages between the two phases in question. Because of the 120 degree phase difference, the line-to-line -line voltage is higher than the phase to neutral voltage. Mathematically, the relationship between line-to-line -line voltage VLL and phase-to-neutral voltage VPN in a Y-connected system is given by the equation VLL equals square root of 3 times VPN. In a 277-480 volt system, the phase-to-neutral voltage VPN is 277 volts. Therefore, the line-to-line -line voltage VLL is square root of 3 times 277 volts, which is approximately 480 volts. This explains why you measure 480 volts when tested across two ungranted wires in a 277-480 volt panel. Now let's address why the voltage from one leg to ground or neutral is 277 volts and not 240 volts. The 277 volts is the phase to neutral voltage, which is determined by the transformer's secondary winding. In a Y-connected system, the neutral point is at the center of the Y, and each phase is connected to one of the three legs of the Y. The voltage from each leg to the neutral point is the phase-to-neutral voltage, which is 277 volts in this system. The 240 volts is a different voltage level commonly found in single-phase systems, where the voltage is typically split into two 120 volts legs. In a three-phase system, the 277 volts is a direct result of the Y connection and the desired 480 volts line-to-line -line voltage. As for why you don't measure 554 volts when going across two 277 volts legs, this is again due to the phase difference between the phases. You cannot simply add the voltages arithmetically. The vector sum of the two phase voltages, taking into account the 120 degree phase difference, results in a line to line voltage of 480 volts, not 554 volts. The transformer's Y connection plays a critical role in this voltage relationship. The Y connection ensures that the neutral point is stable and that the line to line voltages are balanced. It also provides a convenient way to derive both 480 volts three phase power and 277 volt single phase power from the same transformer. The neutral point is connected to ground, providing a reference point for the system and helping to ensure safety. In summary, the 277-480 volt three phase system is designed with a wire connected secondary to provide both 480 volts line to line and 277 volts line to neutral. The voltage readings are a result of the vector addition of voltages the phase difference between the phases, and the transformer's white connection. The formula to remember is VLL equals square root of 3 times VPN, which explains the relationship between the 480 volts and 277 volts. One must also consider the impedance of the transformer, the connected load and conductor sizing when evaluating the operating parameters of the electrical system. NEC section 220.5 states that a feeder or service neutral load shall be the maximum unbalanced load between the neutral and any one ungrounded conductor. In a three-wire circuit consisting of two phase wires and neutral, the neutral conductor shall be sized to carry the maximum unbalanced load. NEC 220.61 covers how to calculate the feeder neutral load.
the neutral conductor shall have sufficient opacity to carry the neutral load as determined by NEC 220.61. For a system with a grounded neutral, a fault from any phase to ground will result in a large fault current flowing back to the source through the grounding path. This high current is designed to quickly trip the overcurrent protective device such as a circuit breaker or fuse, thereby disconnecting the faulted circuit and minimizing the risk of electrical shock or fire. For example, consider a 480Y-277 volt system. If a phase conductor faults to ground, the voltage driving the fault current is 277 volts the phase to neutral voltage. The magnitude of the fault current depends on the impedance of the fault path, including the impedance of the transformer, the conductors, and the fault itself. A properly designed grounding system with low impedance ensures a high fault current, which facilitates rapid tripping of the overcurrent device. Ground fault protection is typically required for services and feeders rated 1000 amps or more and operating at over 150 volts to ground. This protection is designed to detect and interrupt ground faults at lower current levels than standard over current devices, providing an additional layer of safety. Ground fault protection systems typically use a ground fault sensor also known as a zero sequence current transformer that encircles all the phase conductors and the neutral conductor if present. Under normal conditions, the currents in the phase conductor sum to zero, and there is no current flowing in the neutral. However, during a ground fault, a portion of the current returns through the grounding path instead of the neutral, creating an imbalance that is detected by the ground fault sensor. When the sensor detects a ground fault current above a predetermined threshold, it signals the main circuit breaker to trip, disconnecting the power supply. NEC Article 250 provides comprehensive requirements for grounding and bonding electrical systems. Grounding ensures a low impedance path for fault currents while bonding connects all metal parts of the electrical system to create an equipotential plane, minimizing voltage differences and reducing the risk of electric shock. Effective grounding and bonding are essential for electrical safety and proper system operation. When troubleshooting voltage imbalances in a three-phase system, it's essential to check the following items. Firstly, verify that the source voltage is balanced. Use a voltmeter to measure the voltage between each phase and neutral as well as the voltage between each pair of phases. Significant voltage differences indicate a problem with the source, such as an issue with the utility supply or the transformer. Secondly, check the load distribution. An unbalanced load can cause voltage imbalances. Use an ammeter to measure the current in each phase. If the current draw is significantly different between phases, redistribute the load to balance the current. Thirdly, inspect connections. Loose or corroded connections can cause voltage drops and imbalances. Check all connections at the service panel, distribution panels, and individual loads. Tighten any loose connections and clean corroded connections. Fourthly, test for voltage drops. Use a voltmeter to measure the voltage at various points in the circuit, including at the source, at distribution panels, and at individual loads. Excessive voltage drops indicate a problem with the conductors, such as undersized wires or long runs. Fifthly, check for harmonics. Harmonics can cause voltage distortion and imbalances. Use a harmonic analyzer to measure the harmonic content of the voltage and current. High levels of harmonics indicate a problem with nonlinear loads, such as electronic devices or variable frequency drives. Sixthly, verify grounding and bonding. Improper grounding and bonding can cause voltage imbalances and increase the risk of electric shock. Inspect the grounding and bonding system to ensure that it meets the requirements of the NEC. Seventhly, check the transformer. Problems with the transformer, such as a shorted winding or a loose connection, can cause voltage imbalances. Use a transformer turns ratio TTR tester to check the transformer's turns ratio and winding resistance. Eighthly, consider single phasing, which happens if one of the supply lines opens, like if a fuse is blown on one of the lines. If this happens, current can flow correctly to the motor. This can cause a dramatic current increase in the other two lines, which could cause overheating and eventual failure of the motor as the motor attempts to compensate for the loss of one phase.